What's up guys? It's Daniel and welcome to the 2019 Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 post race review. I'm going to say this right now, this was a really, really awesome race to watch. I know some of you may disagree because it wasn't side by side all the time, but we had a lot of action in this race. I mean, it was a lot of action, not a lot of crashes that happened. There were a few things that happened that were really interesting, but I thought um, it was a a really honestly one of a really really good race now before I get to this video I, I know you're thinking you just finished the video you just finished the race like how well I had to work at Burger King today from 12 to 3 so I apologize for the video coming out really late tonight I had to work um, I'm hoping next week I don't have to work um, so I can get the video out to you guys as soon as I have it ready for you um, I'll try to record it when it when it comes out next week but back to the video um, this Atlanta race was actually really, really, really good. I don't know if it, I think it's someone's new with the package a little bit, and there, there's a lot of promising things that are looking at the package, but we're going to have to wait till next week at, at Vegas to find out how this is going to really go. And I have to say that handling mattered, and, and just, if you had good handling, you're going to go to the front. If you didn't have good handling, you're going to the back, and there were a lot of comers and goers in this race. You know, it was an excellent race. I'll go through kind of like the gist. So, we drop, drop the green flag. You have uh, Eric Amarola and Ricky Santos Jr. up in the front. Um, unfortunately, the outside didn't really get going because, again, the outside is not really good at Atlanta. I don't know what it is about the shape of the track that makes it really bad. But the outside never really gets going, and it just slows up. And, yeah, that and Eric Amarola was able to have the lead for a while. And then, all of a sudden, Kyle Larson, he comes to the front. And he takes the lead from Eric Amarola because Eric Amarola has a bad pit stop. And um, on a pit stop, because we have a competition, caution comes out. And uh, basically, Larson's able to keep the lead for the whole stage. And Kyle Larson is able to win the first stage. Yay, my favorite driver actually having a good race. Then stage two happens, and Kevin Harvick finds his way to the front. You know, he finds his way up front. And Larson's up there as well. I think at, up to this point, these were the two fastest cars. In my opinion, regardless of the outcome of the race, these were the two best cars all race long. It just seemed like a lot of things didn't go their way, though, because a lot of things did not go their way, as you're going to hear. Um, and then Larson's able to stay up front, but Kevin Harvick's able to pass Larson at the end of the second stage. And Kevin Harvick wins the second stage of the race. Then Sage Street comes around, and Kyle Larson gets a speeding penalty. Yay. Now Larson's in the back of the field. The dominant car of the race goes to the back of the field because Kyle Busch brings out a caution, and Larson gets a speeding penalty. That's all on his own. And because it's so hard to get back up to the front, as Almirola had trouble getting back up to the front, you know... That's what happened to uh, Kyle. That's what happened to Larson. He really never could get back up to the front. It took Almirola like almost a hundred laps just to get back in the top ten. You know, Larson he never really had a shot to come back up to the front because it it was just hard. You know, you can't really do anything. And then we have one of the most scariest moments happen with around fifty laps to go in the race. So green flag pit stops are starting to happen, and. Ryan Priest gets done with his pit stop, and he comes off a of pit road, and this is his fault. Clear, I'm not going to say that it's B.J. McLeod's fault at all. It is, it is Ryan Priest's fault. Priest looks down at his, uh, his uh, digital dash, because I don't think he's used to it. I think one thing reason, he, I don't know if he's used to digital dash yet, I don't know. But unfortunately, he looks down at digital dash, and he spins, and he hits uh, B.J. McLeod on the left left rear, and it spins his car out into the pits, and this destroys Ryan Priest's car, and this brings out the the second caution for an in, incident. Um, I'm hoping whoever got injured um, is okay. I You never want to see that. I hope that whoever got injured is all right. That that was a pretty bad wreck, and I was like, I'm just thinking, what the hell just happened? I just still can't believe that moment happened. That's what kind of threw this do this race off, you know, but it's like, this race going so well, and then this happens. And then a lot of things happen, because you have a lot of guys off the lead lap, you know, you have, and you have only two cars that had pending yet, you had Kurt Busch and uh, Joey Logano, everyone else stayed, uh, stays out. Ryan Blaney, who's leaning at this point, he has an issue with his, t he has an issue 
uh, tire um, outside of the pit box. Um, and uh, because of that, he has to go to the tail end of the longest line. And that killed his race for sure. And basically, Logano's in the lead. You have Logano in the lead, and you have Kurt Busch, and you have a bunch of lap cars because all the cars they got the. And then Keselowski in third because he got the free pass. And uh, this would pretty much benefit Keselowski in a sense. And Truex, who should have been a free pass, unfortunately though, it has found out that he had a a uh, uh, penalty. You know, it he, had a, he got a uh, he got a speedy penalty, which is why he didn't get the he didn't get the free pass. And uh, Keselowski did. So then we have a restart with around 40 laps to go, and you have you have these guys, and Keselowski's able to drive his way up to the front, and he's able to get by Kurt Busch, and Brad Keselowski is able to pass Logano with about 30 laps to go in the race. And then one of the scariest moments as a dri teammate to a driver, teammate to a driver of an organization, uh, Logan, a couple guys start having tire troubles. Uh, Daniel Hemrick, who was up front. Oh, was up from the top 10, um, he had a tire go down around 30, with about 20 laps to go, that's a shame for them, because they actually seriously were really fast in this race, and in the second, and then, uh, and then Logano, who had a loose wheel, had, had an issue with tires, and then Ryan Blaney, once again, he had tire issues, so Brad Kozlowski's crew is basically telling him, you need to save your tires, all of a sudden, Mark Tricks Jr., he's starting to, to close in, He's, he's starting to close in on um, on Keselowski, and he's gaining fast in the final 10 laps. And I thought we were going to have a photo finish coming to the line. Unfortunately, there wasn't a photo finish, but it was really, really close. And uh, Brad, and Brad Keselowski is able to hold off Mark Truex Jr., and he's able to win his first race this season. Um, great start for, the, for him. That's... And he was my pick last week, for God's sake. And he freaking won the race. It's like, are you kidding me? The guy that I picked to win last week wins this week. Yeah, Harvick didn't really do anything. Uh, Harvick had a good car, just didn't seem to be really fast. Harvick lost speed in this at the end of this race. But Kozlowski, congrats him. And what's really crazy is Kozlowski has been was battling the flu all weekend, so that's that's really good confidence for them. Even if with the flu, you know, that's a great win, especially for the organization. And I'm pretty happy Kozlowski won in, in that manner. And now Brad Kozlowski also he is now the all-time winner at Penske Racing, passing Mark Donahue to get his 60th career win in the, in racing. And for the organization, and I've got to say that that was pretty cool. I'm gonna give my opinion of the race. Um, honestly, uh, this race was a uh, was a nine out of ten. You had a lot of good racing, a lot of battle strategy, comers and goers. It was an excellent race as a whole, and I'm glad as I was a fan watching. And there wasn't really anything that stupid other than Ryan that Ryan Priest incident. That race was pretty straightforward. And I can see where people weren't upset were upset about it, but I think the package in this race with the brake ducks, it made this race really, really, really good. Way better than last year's Atlanta race. That Atlanta race is kind of boring. We've had two, honestly, Daytona was really good, and this race was honestly really, really, really good. This is already a better you start to a seat a year than last year was. And I if usually when a year starts off good, the end of the year kind of sucks. So I'm hoping we can have a good year from 2019 from the beginning to the end, and yeah, I thought that race was really good. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Also, I apologize if my voice uh, is not 100%. I've gotten to, I got a little mad yesterday for for certain reasons. I'm not going to disclose because you don't, don't even know about my personal life. But um, I hopefully my voice will be better, especially when I do the, the picks and also other NASCAR days that does come out. Um, yeah, honestly, great race and. I think believe Keselowski hopefully passed post race inspection because if he doesn't, I'll have to update you guys on that. But congrats, Brad Keselowski, winning. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel because that helps me out a lot. And turn notifications on so you can be notified when a video goes live on my channel. Can we get five likes on this video? I would really, really appreciate it. Please share this out to your friends as well. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you guys next week when we go to Las Vegas.